What cash flows better, single family rentals or multi family rentals? This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the MLS Search and Nails, the show. I'm James Wise. Today, I'm working with my man, Brian. Brian, you asked me, you're, you're new to the Cleveland market. You asked me what cash flows better, single family homes or multifamily homes? And the answer is, is often going to be multifamily homes, right? Uh, the, the numbers just speak for themselves. And later in this show, when I show you the property that's going to work for you, brother, uh, we'll go through all those numbers and you'll see there. But uh, just to answer your question quickly, back of the napkin type math, you got to look at the price to rent ratio, right? So you take a single family home in the Cleveland market, uh, you know, a like single family to a like duplex, right? Like a high D, low C single family right now in the Cleveland market. You're going to be somewhere around the $80,000 range uh, for cost. And then you're going to be renting it for roughly a thousand bucks, right? So a thousand dollars in rent, $80,000 purchase price. That's what you're looking at with a single family. With a duplex though, you're going to be right around 100 to 115, possibly up to 120. So 100 to 120, and your rents are going to be roughly 1,500. Now, there's going to be a little bit more operating expense with the duplex, right? You're not going to be able to pass the grass off onto the tenants, and you're going to have higher water sewer bills and probably, you know, more frequent turnovers. But when the numbers all pencil out, it looks like those multifamilies are always going to cash flow a little bit better than those single family homes, right? When you're in that CD space. Now, as for you, brother, that's your question. Let's just talk about you real quick, man. You're investing with us all the way from Germany, bro. You are a U.S. citizen and you are a world traveler, bro. You you own a house in Japan that you're cash flowing on. You're living in Germany. You're from the U.S. and now you want to invest in Cleveland. And that's what we're going to do, dude. You got about $220,000 to play with. So you're going to be able to do some serious damage in the Cleveland market because the property I have for you today is only going to require about thirty to thirty-five thousand. That's going to include your down payment as well as some needed renovations to get you started. So let's jump into the numbers on that property right after this. You might be wondering why I'm walking around in a bikini because this is America. That's why land of the free, home of the brave, the land of opportunity. Like the opportunity to click the link below and start investing today. Welcome back. Let's get into the details on this property, okay? 3475 West 63rd, Cleveland, 44102. Been on the market 35 days. It was originally priced at $100,000. Uh, it went under contract with another buyer. I don't know any details about that situation. It's not a red flag. I know a lot of investors out there, anytime a property goes under contract and then it comes out of contract i know like the first questions i get from you guys is like ah, 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 oh my god what's wrong with it something must be wrong with it look guys this is how this works right believe it or not <laughs> having sold over 200 million dollars worth of this stuff and i'm talking 200 million dollars worth of properties priced at like 100k right so that should show you how many transactions i've done right Investors from all over the world, they come into Cleveland, they slingshot offers, they get their inspections, they back out, they can't get their financing, they get scared, they get cold. People back out of deals all the time for whatever reasons. It's irrelevant, okay? In real estate, you got to trust but verify. We do not care why the last person backed out. Why? Because we're going to do our due diligence on the property. If we get it under contract, we are going to get that third-party home inspection. We're going to know everything there is to know about this particular property, and then we're going to make a decision, right? We don't need to know why the old guy backed out. He could have backed out for personal reasons. He could have backed out because he saw something in the inspection report, but we ain't going to take his word for it, right? We're going to look into it ourselves. Who knows if he's right or wrong, right? So was priced at 100 was under contract with somebody else in this listing agent, 
Don't know what happened. Came back on the market. It's now only 95K, and I think it's going to get gobbled up fairly quickly because duplexes in this neighborhood, they fly in the hundred to $120,000 price point, okay? This is like a high C, low D. We're about 40 streets west of where Metro Health is. I love Metro Health because they're investing a billion bucks into that low-income neighborhood. And if I'm in a low-income neighborhood, folks, I want to be in a low-income neighborhood where there's a billion dollars coming in, right? Property like this works great for Section 8. Now, this is the occupied unit. We got a tenant in there at 680, but this tenant has been there for 11 years. We got an 11-year tenant at 680. Market rent, we would get 750 for this unit, but this person, they've been paying 680, been there 11 years. That is a win, folks. You don't make your profit by charging 750 versus 680. You make a lot more profit by keeping the same tenant in there for 11 years, right? As far as the vacant unit, uh, this is the kitchen of the vacant unit. We need to do some updates here, right? This is not going to bring in 750 looking like this, dude. This kitchen is clearly out of like multiple, multiple decades, right? We got floor from like the 80s, cabinetry, uh, which doesn't need to be replaced, but the way it currently looks, it's just mismatched and it's just clearly old cabinetry for either from like the 50s or the 60s, right? So what we'd probably want to do is paint these lowers white to match the uppers, which the uppers actually look pretty cool. Uh, we want to go agreeable gray up top here. This brown part you see here, we'd probably paint that white. Get this thing looking good. Get rid of this ugly stuff. Put some nice new modern vinyl allure. Gray walls looking, you know, probably white trim or possibly work with that wood trim. We'll see how my construction guys want to handle it because it does look like it's in fairly good shape. We'll want to do things like remove the ceiling fans, right? You don't want ceiling fans in these units, man. Anything your tenants could hang on or break, they will, right? Give some love here to this bathroom. Mechanicals look fairly decent. This is probably 15 maybe 20 years old, right? This is probably this hot water tank, maybe 5 to 10, right? You're going to get approximately 30 years of life out of this bad boy, about 15 out of that bad boy. That bad boy cost a G to replace. This one cost about 3 Gs. So that's why we're going to calculate a capital expenditures budget. You're going to be saving up for that because none of this stuff is brand new, but it looks to be in good working order to me. This, as a matter of fact, this other hot water tank looks to be even newer. I bet that's in the first five years of its life, okay? So... The big ticket stuff is looking good. Here's your upstairs furnace. Looks to be even newer. All right, two electric panels. Okay, everything uh, looking pretty decent to me, right? So, with all that said, as far as rents go, we're going to do the upgrades to that unit. We're going to be able to get 750 If we eventually uh, up that 11-year tenant's rent, we should be looking at about 1500 in rent, right? 18 grand a year. As far as price goes, they want 95 I think we go in at 90 see what we could do. If you got to pay 95 not a big deal, but I see, see we try to get it at 90 Let's budget a minimal reno, right? Just minimal stuff to that kitchen. We're looking at about 10 G's. If we want to update the bathroom as well, we might want to add another five in there. But let's go with just a modest $10,000 budget. What my guys will do is they will give you two bids. They'll give you the regular bid, which meets our minimum rental expectations, or we'll give you a premium option, which you don't have to choose the premium option, but I think the premium option is the better move because that is what leads you to get tenants in there for 10, 11 years. You make the unit really nice where they don't want to move out. It makes money for you in the end. But let's just start it off with a minimum budget here, not, uh, 10K, right? So you pay 90, you put 10 into it, you're all in for 100, right? What does the numbers look like on that investment? Well, 15 hundo comes in. Like I said, we're going to have to budget or save money for those capex right so every year nine hundred dollars that money goes back to you but i want you to save that don't think of that as your return because i don't count that as your return because eventually you're going to be replacing furnaces eventually hot water tanks eventually you're doing a roof this is probably like a seven eight thousand dollar roof and it ain't new right so you're saving 900 every year because you know that's money you're going to put back into your property in addition right vacancy and non-payment repairs and maintenance right when tenants turn over you got to spend money on that stuff you got to redo your units that's why we want to make them as nice as possible keep people in there as long as possible if you got two tenants both in there for 10 years dude that's freaking 10 years of $900 that you didn't have to spend, right? So that would be nine Gs of like savings, right? So that's how you make your money, right? 
And then, of course, you got your other stuff, taxes, insurance, water, sewer, blah, blah, blah. So at the end of the day, right, 18000 scheduled to come in, but I really only want you to consider a little bit over 9000 of that pure profit. At your $100,000 investment, right, your down payment, that'd be 22 and a half, but don't forget about that 10 k of upfront repairs. So you'd be all into this for 32 and a half out of your pocket. We'll get a lender to kick in 67 and a half. If you guys don't have lenders, if you need lenders, uh, just send emails to Hol uh, sales at holtonweiss.com. We'll get you our list of lenders, right? So you kick in 32 and a half, bank kicks in 67 and a half. That would net out to an estimated 18.2% cash on cash return. That is why investors from all over the world come to the Cleveland market to get properties that cash for like this. You can't do this in Los Angeles. You can't do this in New York. You can't do this in Dallas, Texas, folks. That's why what we do here at Holton Wise is incredibly popular. That's why I've sold over $200 million of real estate just like this, right? Because not only am I giving you the information on this to do the due diligence, I'll be able to represent you as your broker. My company will handle your property management, maintenance, insurance, that rehab I talked about. We will handle that for you. The whole shebang. Let me know what you want to do. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.